Hi, I'm Sheila Walsh, Program Coordinator of the Radio Humber Diploma Program here at Humber College. Welcome to On the Radio, a webisode feature where we speak with industry experts and Humber alumni on all things radio. Today, I speak with James Duffy. Okay, we are here in RBD career prep class, and we welcome Gemini winning host of the NHL on TSM, Mr. James Duffy. James came today and uh, spoke to the career prep class three weeks away now from, from leaving us. And you had some really great, um, really great things to say. Uh, first of all, I want to talk that primarily you have done mostly TV, but you said you did a little bit of radio back in Carleton. Um, uh, what, what didn't draw you to radio? Why did you choose TV? Uh, it wasn't that I wasn't drawn to radio. It's just that I happened to fall into TV, I think. Radio was my first gig at uh, CKCU, the Carleton radio station. I did early morning news at about 5.30, so that's probably what drew me away from, from radio, getting up that early. But I certainly hadn't closed my mind to radio. Honestly, probably back then, I was, they said that you could make more money in TV, and I was greedy like any other young man, and that's probably why I chose <laughs> television more than anything else. But I just happened to get my first job in TV and went that way. And you spent uh, the first five years of your career, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, news, and you said something really valuable because there's a lot of uh, uh, broadcasters who come into Radio Humber and they're really interested in sports broadcasting and they think news is kind of, um, you know, a, a pain in the butt to get to this the sports. And, and you address that. Can you just reiterate what you said? Yeah, I, I think news is invaluable. Now, I understand the desire to go into sports, straight to sports. That's all I wanted to do when I when I was in school, but back then there weren't a lot of sports jobs and that's why I ended up with a job in news. But what I, looking back now, what I think I found is that it makes you a much better broadcaster and also a much more rounded person. Uh, sports is easy. You go to the rink, everything's there for you. The visuals are there if you're doing TV. Uh, they bring the players to you to interview. It's a very easy thing to do. Everything's set to a certain time. Whereas in news, you have to work the phones to get interviews. You get such a larger variety of stories. And I think you become a better writer, a better broadcaster, and maybe more well-rounded as to where sports fits into the world. So I think all those things together are the reasons that I would encourage you to do news if you have the opportunity. And you can always go back to sports after a couple of years. You mentioned a better writer, and that was what you noted in class too. You said, you, you, in your opinion, writing is a little bit of a weakness. So, so what what would you suggest to students who are leaving, and maybe they don't need to continue to hone their writing skills? Where could they hone them? That's a great question. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure of where. Uh, besides practicing and saying, okay, you know, doing the things you do in class that are homework of write this thirty second radio script or write this TV story again. Uh, I just find that. A lot, of the, a lot of our kids who come out of college come to work at TSN are fantastic, on the TV end, are fantastic with visuals. They are way more creative than I am, but when it comes to writing a, a one-minute piece or whatever, they're not so great. And that's, a, you know, I know in journalism school, they beat it into us to write to the pictures and be creative with your writing. And so I just think it's a skill that is maybe overlooked a little bit these days and is really crucial because that's what can set you apart. Um, I, I think good writing can really, if for a young reporter in a career, can really make a difference. Let's move from writing to um, you, your uh, overwhelming information and the time that you have to uh, really strategize of, you know, you mentioned a couple of examples where you had three minutes and you had 19 questions to ask. How, what is your method of filtering out and, and prioritizing those questions? Oh, that's a great question. And I don't know if I have a method or it just happens. Uh, and sometimes I don't do it perfectly. Maybe I, I, I don't ask the right question when I only have one minute left. But uh, when I'm doing interviews, I, listening is the number one thing. Uh, I might have, you know, I, if you want to get someone to talk about a certain subject, uh, uh, obviously that's the first thing you will attack. But again, I think that the number one thing in an interview is to listen because quite often your interview subjects will say something really interesting and people might gloss over it because their producer said, you have to ask these three questions. Don't forget to ask these three questions. Well, sometimes when you do that, you, you miss the best answers and the best follow-up questions. So uh, I guess listening is the number one strategy I have, but 
it's, it's a constant challenge. I've been doing this for 20 years, and it's still a constant challenge in trying to fit everything you want into a three-minute time span. Sure. Now, a majority of the, uh, the sports broadcasters or, or potential sports broadcasters who come into uh, our program are, are male. Mm -hmm. uh, a small percentage are female. So for those small percentage who might be watching this in the future, um, what do you notice that might uh, be a little bit more challenging for them or different or, or it, maybe there's not a difference anymore? I, I think it's we've come a long way and in some ways I think it might be an advantage because I, there still aren't enough uh, good, great broadcasting women in the job. I think there are a lot out there but maybe uh, on air we don't see enough and I, I think a place like TSN if there was an equal male and female applying for a job and they were equal in knowledge and equal in skill I think the woman would probably get hired because we want to see a greater balance. And so I think that's changed a lot from 20, 30 years ago when there was a clear bias against women in sports. Um, the one thing I would say is, you know, knowledge is a key. You ha and the one thing that's weird about our job, watching, spo like your home watching sports growing up, that's where you get your information, right? That's where you get your library in your head. Yeah, I saw that game. I saw the 89 NL Division Series, right? So you can't, you can't decide, you can't fake it. You can't come in and say, oh, I think I want to be a sports broadcaster, but you never really watch the games, you know. And you, so I would say if, if you're a woman and you want to be a sports broadcaster, you really truly have to have the passion about sports because there will be the odd one that comes in that looks great on camera and delivers well, but really doesn't love watching the games that much. And you really have to have that passion. We're fortunate, I think, more and more come in who have an unbelievable passion. TSN, for example, has... Kate Burness, who's fantastic and just has been a sports lover all her life and looks great on camera, has a real passion for sports. Jennifer Hedger, Natasha Staniszewski, they're all that way. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're very popular. I'm sorry that I'm here and not them. But, uh, yeah, so I, I would just say that is don't, don't go into it because it sounds like a good job where you could make a lot of money. Uh, you have to have that passion for it or people are smart. The viewers are smart. And, or the listeners of its radio, and they, they know the difference between a fraud or someone who really knows their stuff. They're a tough audience, aren't yeah. they? Okay, so I'm going to wrap this by probably one of the best quotes of 2014 so far. A confident man uses the middle urinal. James Duffy, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>